Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and today we're going to be talking about the actress Joan Collins and her favorite beauty products as well as some of her beauty secrets and her beauty routine. So let's jump right in and talk a little bit about Joan Collins. So Joan Collins is an English actress. She was born on May 23rd, 1933 in London. So Joan Collins comes from a long line of showbiz. Her mother was a former nightclub hostess and her father, Joseph William Collins, had a talent agency representing Tom Jones and the Beatles. So she was always around actors and musicians most of her life. And Jackie Collins, her sister, was a successful novelist whose works have sold more than 400 million copies globally. And she was born in 1937 and her brother Bill was born in 1946. And I initially decided to do this video because I saw a documentary on Netflix about her sister Jackie Collins, which is really interesting, I highly recommend it. And Joan Collins was so beautiful as a baby that her mother put a sign on her stroller that said, Do Not Kiss. During World War II, the Collins family huddled down at tube stations with other Londoners as German bombs rained down on the city. Collins' mother died in 1962 and Joan's father remarried and had another daughter who was 35 years younger than Joan Collins. Joan Collins arrived in Hollywood in the 1950s during the golden age of Hollywood with aspirations of becoming a movie star. In the 1951 picture, Lady Godiva Rides Again, she had her first film role and was an uncredited beauty pageant contestant. She did a series of B-movie performances with frequent television appearances and pin-up shots for the next three decades. She became a Hollywood icon, driving a trademark pink Thunderbird and having a high-profile relationships with Dennis Hopper and Warren Beatty. She starred in some successful adaptations of her sister's novels, including The Stud and The Bit. Her first memoir, Past Imperfect, had lewd a chronicle of her escapades, it was released in 1978, and it went on to become a bestseller. And I also was looking online and trying to do a lot of research on Joan Collins and she was supposed to get the role for Cleopatra but they ended up giving it to Elizabeth Taylor instead and Joan Collins said that the head of Fox Studios at the time was asking her to basically do favors and put her up in an apartment and Joan Collins refused so I always wonder what would have happened if she got that role of Cleopatra. And later, Joan Collins was invited to audition for the hit TV show Dynasty, and this was a struggling primetime drama in its second season at the time. She played Alexis Carrington, Colby, and she played a ruthless and vindictive ex-wife, and everyone loved Joan Collins on the show. And Aaron Spelling said, We created a character about 50 different people could have portrayed it, and 49 of them would have failed miserably. She managed to make it work. And Joan Collins was nominated for a Golden Globe six times before winning one in 1983. She was also nominated for an Emmy for her work on the show. Her character became so well known for fans that many still refer to her as Colby more than two decades after the show ended. Joan Collins' personal life was frequently as dramatic as the part she played on screen. Collins married Irish actor Maxwell Reed in 1952 and divorced him in 1956. And then she married her second husband, Anthony Newley, in 1963 and had two children with him before divorcing him in 1970. Her third husband, Apple Records CEO Ron Cass, had daughter Katie during their 11-year marriage, which began in 1972. Her fourth marriage to Swedish pop singer Peter Holm ended in a tumultuous divorce in 1987 after only 13 months. Collins married her sixth spouse, theater company manager Piercy Gibson, who was 32 years her junior in February 2002. In 2009, they rekindled their vows. And Collins continued to act and write after Dynasty, writing self-help beauty books and mystery and murder romance novels. Collins was entangled in an unpleasant legal dispute with her fiction publisher Random House in 1996, which accused her of breaching a four million two book contract. 
after a much publicized public trial in which her writing abilities were disparaged in court, a jury found in Collins' favor. And I actually picked up this Joan Collins book. It's a beauty book and it's called Joan's Way, Looking Good, Feeling Great. And she has a whole series of these books and this one is actually signed by her which I didn't realize when I bought it online because I didn't say that it was a signed version and this one's from 2002. I am curious to read her other books now but this one is actually pretty good. I am quite liking it so far and she has a lot of good tips in there. So I'm going to dive into some of the tips that I read in this book as well as some research I did online to discover which perfume she wore as well as her favorite beauty products that I think she used and that she said she used. And she also has a lot of great beauty tips. And tragedy in the family, Jackie Collins, Joan Collins' younger sister, died of severe breast cancer on September 19th, 2015. Jackie had kept her sickness, which she had been diagnosed with six and a half years earlier, a closely guarded secret, only alerting her sister two weeks before her death Jackie told People on September 14th that she didn't want to burden Joan with the news in what would be her final interview. It would have had a significant impact on her and I didn't think she needed it in her life. And she said, I didn't want to burden her with anything because she was so upbeat and social but I'm not sure how strong she is. Joan was taken aback when Jackie told her the news but the two grew closer as a result. I feel like that would be so shocking to find out and then two weeks later have someone so close to you die. It'd be very upsetting, at least for me. Joan said of her sister's death, she was my best friend. I respect how she handled herself in the situation. I adored her because she was a fantastic, bold, and lovely person. And when it comes to perfume, Joan Collins is known for wearing the perfume Guerlain Shalimar, as well as Guerlain and Jicky. And these are both really classic perfumes. So I'm kind of not surprised that she wore these ones. I've talked about Shalimar many times on this channel and Shalimar came out in the 1920s and it is a very mythical fragrance with bergamot, iris, and vanilla. It's a very sensual perfume. It definitely reminds me of a 1920s speakeasy. Flappers used to wear this perfume and it really takes you back in time. It's one of my favorite perfumes from the 20s. And it's a great perfume to collect if you're a perfume collector. It's one of my favorites just because it's so unique. And once it settles into your skin, it's a really nice fragrance. And notes of vanilla come out. And this one came out in 1925. And actually won first prize at the Paris Decorative Arts Exhibition. And its curves were inspired by the basins of the famous Shalimar Gardens. And the next perfume that she loves is Guerlain and Jiggy which is another very popular perfume in old Hollywood and a classic. And this one came out in 1889, so it's quite old. And the top notes are rosemary, bergamot, lemon, mandarin orange. The middle notes are lavender, tonka bean, orris root, basil, jasmine. And the base notes are vanilla, leather, spices, sandalwood, amber, and Brazilian rosewood. And I really like Jiki as well. Um, Sharon Tate also wore this perfume. And when it comes to makeup, Joan Collins says she applies her own makeup, which takes her no more than 20 minutes. And she says when she was 17, she had her first professional makeup application. And the makeup artist was an elderly man who spat on the mascara. And after that, she taught herself how to do her own eye makeup. She says, I always make a smoky eye that grows smokier during the day. And she says, but the true reason is that I don't like wearing a lot of mascara. I despise pants. I'm well known for it, but I also despise mascara. And I feel like I'm like Joan Collins, I despise wearing pants, so maybe we're kind of similar that way. And she says Ava Gardner, Hedy Lamarr, Vivian Lee, and Elizabeth Taylor are among the actresses from the 1940s and 50s whose looks she admires. And she loves Naomi Campbell from the 1990s. And today's actresses, she says, have a very drab appearance. And she says they all look the same. And for Beauty Secret, she says she puts oil on her face as soon as she wakes up, even before she gets her coffee. And she says if she's staying in, she'll apply moisturizer three or four times a day throughout the day and wear no makeup besides lipstick. 
She says, if I'm going out, I'll wash my face with water, and if I have a late night, I'll use cold packs. At night before, I remove all my makeup with Kleenex and my Timeless Beauty Scrumptious Cleanser, or Nivea. I think before she came out with her beauty line, she used Nivea. And she puts on a generous amount of cream before she goes to sleep at night, and she says she'll even wake up the middle of the night and put on cream. And she says for her daily beauty routine, she says she uses day cream to cleanse in the morning, which is Nivea, and I always like to ensure that I remove every last trace of makeup at night. And then after that, she uses a toner before applying a decent night cream. And she says she also uses a Nivea toner. And to preserve her skin, she always applies foundation before going outside and keeps her face out of the sun as well as using an SPF. And Joan says the one makeup item that she can't live without is lipstick, and I have noticed that she always wears a bold, bright lipstick color. She says she developed a fascination for cosmetics when she was a child, watching her mother and her aunts, all of whom were very glamorous, apply their makeup. She says, I've always wanted to give it a shot. And that mascara was the first piece of cosmetics I've ever owned. And when it comes to learning how to do her own makeup, she says that her mother taught her, but it wasn't until she got to Hollywood for her first American picture that she learned how to properly apply it. Although she was insistent on not having a makeup artist and would do her own makeup, she was fortunate enough to work with Whitney Snyder, who was also Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist, as well as many other stars at Fox Studios. And, she, and he graciously agreed to show Joan Collins how to do her own makeup. And ever since she learned the tricks from him, she, she has been doing her own makeup. And she says that Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist taught her how to apply makeup and he used to enhance Marilyn Monroe's eyes by applying a small amount of white powder above the lashes in the center of the eyelid to keep the foundation in place. And she always uses powder and she says she uses a loose powder at home, but she always carries her favorite in her bag just in case paparazzi come after her as well as a lipstick. And she says she uses a bowl of ice and cotton pads before all large events. And this way she puts them on her eyes and then lies down for five minutes and this refreshes her eyes and minimizes the puffiness. She says in the sun she always wears a hat to protect her face. She says she really enjoys getting a tan, but she said Claudette Colbert, a Hollywood icon, once told her, if you find a look that suits you in your 30s or 40s, stick with it. And she says that's sound advice. And Joan's philosophy is when you want to wow, choose red, which explains why she's rarely seen without a strong lip. And I think it's true, like a red lipstick really makes you look glamorous. And she agrees that everyone can wear a bright lipstick no matter their age, as long as it's the correct tone for you. And her all-time favorite color is the one she doned as Hyleen in the 1980s miniseries Sins. She was so taken with it that she decided to duplicate it in her own cosmetic line. And Joan Collins once spotted Joan Crawford at uh, an event and noticed that her lipstick matched her nails and Joan Collins felt that that was the chicest thing she had ever seen and now she does it all the time, matching her lipstick to her nails like Joan Crawford. And she relieves all of her tiredness and baggy eyelids and dark circles with ice and she always makes sure that she doesn't have any puffiness under her eyes before wearing any makeup. And she also splashes her face with cold water a few minutes every morning. She says this is very stimulating for the complexion and gives you a glow. But she also says you have to use moisturizer right afterwards, so it's very similar to Joan Crawford's beauty routine. She also emphasizes exfoliating your skin once or twice a month. But she says she's not going to say particular products. She says, quite frankly, they're all pretty much the same. She says, although I have found some of the more expensive products to work better, but she doesn't really say which ones in the book, which is really frustrating. And then when I look now, she's really promoting her own beauty line. But she did say that she used Nivea and Vaseline. She says the most important look of a, having a groomed look are your hands and nails. She says the fact that by age 40, women will have only half of the amount of fat cells in the backs of their hands compared to men, and she says it's so unfair. She says the female skin is also thinner and ages more rapidly. She says if your hands are looking a great deal older than your face, then you've been neglecting them. Because they're exposed to the elements more than any other body part except the face that they will soon show your age. They also receive more wear and tear than anywhere else except the feet. 
She says, give your hands some tender loving care and prevention being a better part of the cure. She says, here are some tips to keep your hands and nails looking good. She says, always moisturize after bathing, washing, and after you've done with the dishes. In other words, whenever your hands have been in soap or water, keep a bottle of hand lotion next to the sink and rub it in up to your elbows. Once or twice a month, she says, cover your hands in a rich cream and some vitamin E oil or even Vaseline and sleep with cotton gloves on. And she says these gloves are super affordable and you can buy them anywhere. I actually bought a packet online and I'm going to try this too because I feel like my hands get especially dry in the winter so I want to see if it works. I feel like it's a vintage beauty tip that I've always wanted to try. She also says overdosing on sun or being exposed to very cold air makes them dry or brittle your hands and they need a good coat of nail polish on your fingers. And she says to make sure that your makeup will last, spritz your face with Evian spray or dab lightly with a cotton ball briefly dipped in water. So that I really enjoyed this book and she also has lots of other tips for like dieting as well as relationships. So let me know if you've read any of these books. I'm really curious. She seems like a really interesting person and very glamorous. In many ways she does kind of remind me of Elizabeth Taylor. I'd love to know your, your thoughts below and thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the big red button below and I'll see you guys again soon. All right, bye.